and welcome to Guided Embrace Radio. We are here live on W4CY.com, brought to you by Talk for Media Network. I am your host, Jackie Vessio, and I am thrilled to be doing yet another episode of Life Changing Our Live, here with my very special guest host, David Octavio Gondel. Hi, David. How are you, Jackie? Can I, can I ask for a favor? Can I just start this with a little prayer real quick? I would love that. All right, real quick. I just, I uh, I just want to thank God for this opportunity because I've been, the last three days I've been in bed, basically, um, some kind of flu, I have no idea what it is. And, uh, and Lord, I, I just want to thank you for the opportunity of raising me up. This morning I got up and I looked through all the noise and looked through all the texts and looked through all the voicemails that I haven't answered. And you reminded me that uh, I hosted a show with cancer and, and I hosted for two days. And, uh, you know, and I've done a lot after that. And um, you raised me up and you gave me the strength. And uh, today you, you planned this day uh, with uh, this amazing uh, sister in Christ, Carolyn Abrett was a national publisher author who I invited for this exact show and uh, I wasn't gonna miss it and I just thank you God for giving me the strength and giving me my voice back because I couldn't talk uh, for the last 24 hours mm -hmm. and I know that this is gonna be a life-changing um, show not just for myself because I know this was a test mm -hmm. but for everybody that's listening so I pray that everybody that's listening today understands that all four of us that are here even with Reverend Nancy here as well joining us today is, is to bless you, is to share something with you that I hope it uh, touches your heart and it really changes your life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for that opportunity. Amen. Thank you. Um, you know, here at Guided Embrace Radio, we strive to raise awareness that wherever one may be on their life journey, there are tools available to all of us to enhance the joy and ease the discomfort. And I can't even think right now of a better group of three individuals to have in this room with Chad and myself to go over um, what we want to go over today. If you've listened before, welcome back. If it's your first time listening, thank you and welcome. And we um, would love to have callers call in during the show and you can do that by calling 561-623-9429 with any questions you may have, any comments, anything that you'd like to ask our special guest. Um, of course, we have the wonderful Dr. Reverend Nancy Kennedy joining us as well today. Um, we, we are thrilled, and since I did the honors last show of introducing our special guest, um, I'd love for you to introduce her now, David. She was with us on Women of a Certain Age, another episode of Guide and Embrace Radio for the last hour, and she is here with us again, and, I, and I'm just very humbled, and I'm very, very grateful and honored to have her. So if you want to introduce Absolutely. It would be a pleasure. It would be a blessing. Carolyn A. Brett is someone that, you know, um, I got to meet in a funny story. Uh, she actually came to one of the shows that I hosted, and, and uh, I wasn't able to meet her that day, yet everybody else met her that day. And uh, I, through somebody else, I ended up calling her. Um, uh, a while back and I said you know I want to apologize because everybody knows who you are and how wonderful you are and how stunning you are but yet I didn't get to meet you and I'm so sorry and anyway that apology ended up to us you know developing a, a, an amazing friendship an amazing relationship and a godly relationship that we are able to share our stories and I didn't know anything really about her this young lady is 60 years young um, she has uh, already seven books published she is in the, in the Library of Congress. She is in, nas in national television, uh, just getting ready for another amazing uh, show next year that she'll let us know about. Uh, but the most important thing is the connection between me and Carolyn became something about consistency, something about knowing that we have a promise for our lives, something that I know a lot about. You know, I made a promise to God that I would share my testimony till I die, till I leave this earth. And I have done that, you know, for over 10 years now. And Carolyn has done the exact same thing with her testimony, which she'll share a little bit about, because I really want her to share that with, with you guys here today in Life Changing Hour. Absolutely. But it's really about a, a, a promise, a purpose. She found a purpose that is against all odds, um, dealing with sacrifice and suffering, even saying goodbye to family members, even saying, you know, even having to to say no to certain people, even having to separate herself from people she loved to continue her path. And those are things that I had known through my journey is that not everybody can keep climbing with you and not everybody can understand your dream and not everybody can understand your purpose. As long as you know what it is, 
you have to continue to believe that God has a journey planned for you and you just have to continue to be obedient. So Caroline, thank you so much for honoring with your presence um, and just being here with us. It's truly, truly a blessing. I am just so humbled. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's, it's just beautiful. I've enjoyed this, you know, the last hour, it was fabulous. <laughs> it went by quickly, didn't it? it? Did. Very quickly. Yes. Very quickly. So, so let's see, where should we begin? Maybe you want to give people who may have not been able to listen to the last show um, a little background, your story, and kind of like fast forward them to how you've gotten to where you are, because again, you're in this wonderful, amazing place, but you had to overcome a lot of hurdles to get here. Yes, and I, I'm going all the way back to the age of 18 years old. My dad uh, came to California to visit me. Back in those days, I was an airline stewardess, so I spent $10.50 to buy dad a first-class ticket to come <laughs> <Wow>. and see me. <laughs> so That's coming, beautiful. <laughs> coming from Colorado, where there isn't the, the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean, Dad and I were always intrigued about the ocean. Mm -hmm. So one Wednesday afternoon, I'll never forget it for as long as I live, Dad and I, we went to Redondo Beach, California, and this, the sun wasn't out, it was a little kind of hazy out, and Dad and I, we were real excited because there was no one on the beach, because folks in California, they thought it was freezing, but Dad and I, we thought it was a heat wave. So You're we were like, this lived, is beautiful. Oh, yeah, coming from California, I mean, Colorado, we thought, oh my God, we're gonna, this is great, we have the beach to ourselves. And Dad, being a pastor, he said, he always wrapped his pastoral or godly sermons to me, and I'm thinking, I don't want Dad to preach to me, <laughs> but Dad saw it. He said, Carolyn, do you see that pelican over there? I said, Dad, what pelican? He said, that pelican flying high, high, high in the sky. And behind that, we're hearing the, the literally the roars of the, the, the Pacific Ocean just, you know, just, just uh, coming at us, and it just sounds so beautiful. And Dad said, imagine if God gave that pelican one job to do, and the pelican would have to take one grain of sand in its pouch, flying all the way to the moon, flying back and forth, removing all the sand off the face of the earth. Dad said, Carolyn, how long do you think that, ta that would take? And of course I'm thinking, okay, this must be a trick question. <laughs> like, what is wrong with him? The pelican right? can never, ever, ever finish removing the sand off the face of the earth. And I'll never forget, Dad looked me directly in my eyes like I'm looking at you. And Dad said, Carolyn, one day I am not going to be with you. And I'm going, oh, wait, stop. Yeah. I, we don't want to talk about that, Dad. He said, but Carolyn, you've got to hear me. One day I'm not going to be with you, but I will be with you in spirit. So I want you to think of that pelican for as long as it takes the pelican to remove all the sand off the face of the earth. My love will be with you. And that's a moment I shall never forget Beautiful. for as long as I live. So, you know, Dad used to say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, Dad, I, although I never went to his funeral because I didn't know that he had died, I was never told where he was buried. But Dad is still with me because I remember the pelican, that, the, that his love will be with me forever. Carolyn, you Amen. know, you said something very profound there but also something that a lot of people don't know because the people that are listening to us today might not know your story um, you know and that's kind of the purpose we have to share our story with unique people mm -hmm. and everybody and sometimes are not the same ones that we share all the time and that's why this show to me is so important we have a new audience that doesn't know you know what you've suffered it doesn't know your sacrifice and so today I want you to just share a little bit because you said you weren't able to go to your father's mm -hmm. funeral yet you were his caretaker. Mm -hmm. yes. So please share with, with the audience today a little bit about that. Yes, I uh, was blessed to be able to work in pharmaceuticals uh, and work my way up to a clinical education manager. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I made a lot of money at that stage, but I worked my little fanny off to get there. And when Dad did get sick back in 1997, I remember, I was in denial, I just thought Dad was just forgetting a few things. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, most right. of us do, I forget things all the well, time. Well, it's a sneaky progression, right? At Absolutely. first they can hide it. <laughs> oh, they hide it. Dad hid yes. it very, yes. very well. But Dad kept calling me to go to Cal to, from California to Colorado 
for little things like Carolyn, somebody stole my, my car, although the car was sitting out in front of his house. Or he would have, you know, uh, water damage in the basement. And Carolyn, can you talk to the insurance people? I'm going, you know, my superhero, why is he calling me, asking me to do stuff that he could do? That's what I'm right, thinking. Right. But then one day when I went to, Cal to Colorado to visit Dad, Dad had lost like 30 pounds. And I rushed out to the uh, VA hospital, and the doctor said, oh, I'm so happy you brought your dad here because his hemoglobins are so low, he could have died. Oh and that's God. when I said, Dad, you're coming to California with me. Although Dad didn't do it immediately, mm -hmm. it took him like two years to, uh, to make that phone call to me. And when he made the phone call, I was on my way to a national meeting in Florida, and I got that phone call. Guess what? Forget about the Forget meeting. About the meeting. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go get my yes. dad. Yes. So inevitably what I ended up doing, I ended up demoting myself from a clinical education manager to a sales rep so I could be closer to my father. Have the flexibility. Absolutely. Yes. His dad was moving yes. in with me. So that right there was a first change. Second change was when you know I was still in denial and I let dad drive the car because oh. you know dad's independent. Right. And dad got, I'll never forget, I was in my home office doing some work and dad peeked his head in my uh, home office and said, Carolyn, I'm going to go to the store. Do you want anything from the store? No, dad, wow. dinner will be ready as soon as you get back home. So I knew right. dad would be home we'll like in okay. 20 minutes. Sure, sure. 20 minutes passed, about 30 minutes, half an hour. Then I go to the grocery store looking for him and it was starting to get turned dust outdoors. Uh -huh. And I gotta oh, tell you, nice. I ask everybody in the grocery store, have you seen a man I described my father? No, oh. no, we haven't seen him. Uh -huh. And that's when panic, the panic button, uh -huh. it yes. slapped me in my face. Yes. I called the, the sheriff's department, I called everybody, help me find my dad, help me. I think, I, that's when I re realized, I think my dad has dementia, I never said that before because I was in denial. Of course. And so, right. guess what? They, nobody could find my dad. So I got in my car, drove to Sacramento, California, which is 98 miles from where I lived, because I got a phone call from someone at a car dealership saying, are you Caroline Brett? And I can't stand it when a person calls and says, are you <laughs> Caroline Brett? Yes. I, Bad news. Yes. <laughs> so I, she said, well, I think your father was here and he left again and he looked really disheveled Gosh. and it looked like he urinated on, on himself. I said, but oh go goodness. stop him, stop yeah, him. Right. And she said, no, but he's gone. He's, I just wanted to let you know that, wow. that oh your dad goodness. was here. Oh and goodness. I went to, I drove uh, 98 miles to, and I started driving. Can you imagine driving up and down freeways and no. just looking for my yeah. father? And I called my family, and they said, and this is the truth, oh, you know you'll find them. Yeah, that a girl, you find them. Once you find them, you could call us. Because when they're not involved, they, they almost feel like you're and they, embellishing, and making and up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And oh. probably the last time they talked to him was the two minutes that he was actually totally normal. Yeah, exactly. Right? So that's their reality. <laughs> that's, that's reality. So finally, a friend of mine, and she's at like 20 years older than me in Los Angeles, she said, Carolyn, go home and wait for the sheriffs to call you because you are, this is a mistake with you going schlepping up and down uh -huh. the freeways. And you're, you're putting yourself at risk. Yeah, so what I did, I went home and the phone rang. The phone did ring and it was dad on the other line. Dad said, Carolyn, I'm looking for your house. And I said, well, dad, where are you? And the phone hung up. This is oh. the, the true story. Oh, and I went, oh my God. And then the sheriff's department and uh, Yo, Yo, uh, it's called, uh, oh, Doug, uh, Yo Belinda, California, they, okay. con they contacted me and said, well, we have your dad. We have him at the, at the sheriff's department, mm -hmm. and we're going to hold on to him. And it was 200 and something miles away from what? where I had seen my dad. So that was when I had my wake-up call. Mm -hmm. That I was said, a gift from God. It was, I said, dear God, I, guess, I yeah, promise you that... You know, getting dad back, I'm going to take better care. I'm not going to be in denial. Yes, uh -huh. I do believe he has dementia, although I didn't want to believe it. And that not. was when I started doing safeguards for dad. And the, it was the Veterans Administration, uh, because I couldn't get, get dad to go to the, any doctor. Dad was like, <laughs> doctor, you go to the doctor. I don't need to go. Uh -huh. So I had the VA to come to my home, and they were the ones that said, if you don't get your dad on medication, if you don't get him where we could watch him a 72-hour, 
you're, you may lose your dad permanently next time. Right. And boy, oh boy, I fooled dad. I said, dad, I, I want to take you to the airport. This is how I got dad to go to the uh, Wow. And he, dad had his little bag of Aww. whatever, you know, his vitamins in it. Right. And then I took him to a 20, uh, it was a 72 hour lockdown where they could okay. evaluate him. They could that was the, everything. Yes, yeah. that was the hardest thing of my life because once the doctor came out, Dad knew, yes. mm -hmm. and Dad is like, why are you doing this to I mean, I could hear it right oh, now, yeah. and I just knew I had to take Dad because he needed to be on medication. And mm -hmm. I ended up mm -hmm. having to walk out the facility mm -hmm. because they needed to take care of Dad. But of course, my family's still in denial. They're thinking that I'm abusing him when oh they have no idea what I had just gone through right. the 48 hours. So that's how, my, that's how my story started. That's amazing. I mean, David, right? Even you're speechless, and that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> well, it's 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 different when you have to take care of somebody else. Yes. You know, it's um, I yes. went through a lot of people that, yeah, you know, especially my parents mm -hmm. uh, taking care of me, and there was nothing they could do. You know, they felt they, all they could do was pray. Powerless. And correct. And and, fear. and, and that's fear. something that that's you know, I can feel to a degree but not to the full extent, you know, until when you have somebody that, you know, I, two years ago, and I think I shared this with you, Jackie, that my mom was in the hospital uh, for three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, she basically uh, was, her heart stopped and in front of my father, and the emergency room came in, and I mean, my dad called 911, and I literally was just talking to my dad that day, and I just asked him, what hospital are you going to? And I went back to South Beach, packed my bag, and went to Tampa, not knowing that I was going to be there for three weeks, but mm -hmm. not knowing if my mom was going to be alive when I got there, mm -hmm. and she was in the ER. So that's the closest I can be to that story, you know, driving four hours, not talking, to five hours, not talking to anybody, not knowing what was going on until I got to the emergency room, and thank God my mom was resuscitated and she was back. She had pneumonia, but she had let it go too far to the mm -hmm. point that her heart mm -hmm. stopped mm -hmm. and you know knowing my parents and knowing their faith you know my father being 83 years old he's dealt with a lot but he's still alive and still kicking mm -hmm. uh, thank God yes. but you know to to get to the hospital when I got there at midnight or 11 o'clock or whatever that's the closest that I can feel yes. to that story the unknown yes. and that is why I believe that I wanted you to be here today some people don't know the unknown or don't want to look at the unknown and that's okay. You don't need to focus on the unknown, mm -hmm. but you have to know what to do, or at least where to go. Yes. When you when you're faced with that trial. Be yes. aware and yes. prepare. Yes. And and just like the title of one of your books, why wait? Yes. Right. Because your story, um, you know, I could I could say that it didn't have a happy ending for you personally, and and I'd love you to take a minute to explain why. At the same time. We could also say, in a weird way, thank goodness it went that route because the changes that you're making, the strides that you've made, the fact that you're raising awareness around the country, soon to be around the world, um, may not have happened yes. if your story was the traditional model of all hands on deck and, you know, yes, we're going to argue a little, but we're all going to take care of Dad and he's going to pass away. Right. Right? So, yes. so you spent, I think, the next... Um, decade or so taking care of your dad, right? 12 years. 12, 12 years, yes. okay. And then, um, you know, your family was kind of hands off. Seven siblings or eight yeah, siblings? It's, it was eight of us total, yes. My goodness. But they all had husbands, wives, children. daughters, sons, yeah. children to take care of. And so I guess right there, um, you know, again, I was in a similar boat, you know, decades ago when you're not married and you don't have the children people just assume and it's not anything bad right that oh well you have the time you have the money you do it right right and you did it for yes. quite a long time and then well this is what I did in order to do it once I realized that my family was not going to help me I'll never forget I was in the shower and I put my arms around myself mm -hmm. and I said dear God I dedicate my life to taking care of my father Please show me how. And that's you did. It, that's exactly Power what I did. You know what? You know what? Your family were fighting you because of their own denial. Yes. Mm. Because we're all human yes. and we all deal with things differently. Yes. But you were the one who came here 
on this planet right. to do this to further your war your work. Yes. Because if they had stepped in, you wouldn't be doing this. No, I wouldn't. No, have that's what I mean. Fact, right. It took me to go through the excruciating. Now, when I say excruciating, my daddy was my best, best friend, friend and my hero. Mm -hmm. He's still my best yes. friend. Yes. And he's still my hero right now. And he's in this room with us. His yes, spirit he is. is here. Yes, I he believe is. But because of the, that pain, it forced me into asking God, what am I supposed to do with this pain? Am, am I going to let it kill me? Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget what really, when I really understood what my purpose was, I started, I created Character Restory, and it was just going to be an on, uh, online website for people to hear my story. Mm -hmm. And that was it. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. But all the time I'd go and someone would show me how to use the computer because I didn't really know how to use the computer, I had a, it was just peaceful. And all the time I would work on Caregiver Story, God would give me more things to put on it. Mm -hmm. And I just felt that peace and serenity. And then finally, I said, well, Dad's right here with me doing this because where am I getting this where information from? Right. Right. So right. You're that plugged was, into something. That was mm -hmm. what happened to me, and that's how the but, story. But, you know, your dad, did, did he, he ended up in the hospital. So 12 years, fast forward, you're doing all of this, dedicating your life. Um, God's clearly working through you. And... And then he got hurt, and you let your family know, correct? Yes, and I want to back up just to show you how what, sure. how, what a mighty God we have. I was supposed to be in Florida for a national sales meeting just for reps. And for some reason, and this has never happened, the company that I worked at, they canceled the meeting, which meant they threw away thousands and thousands of dollars wow. because they canceled the meeting at the last minute. And I decided, oh, well, let me go see Dad. So I went to Dad's private assistant living, and I noticed Dad was just shut. He was shuffling, couldn't really walk, and he was urinating on himself. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I've got to find out what's wrong yeah, now. That was my right, attitude. Right, right. So I took Dad to a friend of mine that's a primary care physician, and I said, Dr. Fizell, can you check Dad? Something's not right. He's starting to urinate on himself. So Dad, he checked everything, and he sent me across the street for Dad to get a, a, a brain scan. Mm -hmm. yes. So I'm sitting there like, okay, Dad's going to get a brain scan. So what? That was my attitude. Right, right. You know, they, they're, they're going to they're gonna fix Dad. I just know they're going to fix him. Mm -hmm. And it's, they gave me the, the little DVD immediately. And then Dad and I, I took him to a restaurant because I'm still trying to figure out what's going on oh. with Dad. And I get a phone call. It's in the book, so this is, I'm just sharing. Okay, sure. I get the phone call from Dr. Fazell, and he says, Carolyn, where are you? Now, what doctor is going to call you up and mm -hmm. ask you where, where you are? are? Right, right. And I said, well, Dr. <laughs> Fazell, I'm, I'm on the 605 freeway. He said, stop what you're doing. Your dad's going to die. Those were his words. And I'm starting to shake. Oh, my foot's on the, my on the gas, and I'm shaking. What do you mean dad's going to die? He said, your dad is having a massive hematoma. Take him to the nearest mm -hmm. ER. I said, no, i got to take him to the best trauma center because being in pharmaceuticals, you know. all hospitals are not created no, the same. Absolutely. So I drove Dad like a speeding bullet. I must have gone 300 miles an hour to Walnut Creek, California to a trauma center. Mm -hmm. And here it is. You know, I'm not a real big person, but I'm strong. I uh, got a wheelchair at ER, and I'm trying to lift Dad out of the vent. I mean, it, oh can you goodness. imagine lifting? Oh, my goodness. No. I, I didn't know how I was doing it. And then two people came, and they, they saw that I was struggling, and they put Dad in, uh, you know, uh, helped me yeah. to put him in the wheelchair. And then I rolled Dad into ER, and then they had a ne neurologist to come and check Dad out. And I said, look, I have the DVD. We just got this six hours ago or four hours ago. And then I'll never forget what the doctor told me. He looked at the, uh, at the DVD and he said, you have two choices. You could pull your father's shut, and that's a tubing in your skull because Dad had, uh, uh, he had fallen and cracked his skull, so they had to put a tube okay. in there to stop the water. And he said, you could have the tubing uh, pulled, uh, and then your dad's going to be a vegetable. And I said, oh, I don't want to pull it. They don't pull the tube. He said, but if you don't pull it, He's going to die. Which one do you want? And I'm, I'm going, what? what you, are you got to be kidding? I said, there got to be another choice in there. And then I remember I looked at the doctor because he said, well, I'm going to give you, it, you know, 24 hours because we've got to do surgery right. or, or your Something dad's going to die. Happen. And I said, I gotta, I'm going to answer that question right now. I said, my father is a pastor. 
And my father never told me about a tubing. We never talked about this, because who talks about this? I said, but I'm not God, and I'm not going to allow you to have my father to die, because I'm not God. So right. pull the tubing, although he was going to turn into a vegetable, I said, I can't just let my dad die. No. After that, I, w I called my family, and I had a restraining order placed against me for elder abuse. And that was the last time I saw my father. That was fear. That was yeah. all. That was fear. That was all their fear. Yes. It was fear. But it wasn't up to you. It wasn't mm -hmm. up to me, yes. You. Yeah. you didn't have to make that choice. I did not, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That was his and blessing for you. You know what's so beautiful, and this is the beautiful part. Mm -hmm. Dad will I'll always remember him as a healthy person, because I've never seen him in a coffin. I've never seen him dead. I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. So That's therefore, true. my last... My last memory of Dad, he was singing Amazing Grace to me. How <gasps> sweet the sound <laughs> to save a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now, now I'm found. found. Was blind, blind but, but now, now I, I see. see. Now I remember that. Mm -hmm. That was Dad's last song he sung that to me. That was for you. Yeah. Yeah, it was. You didn't have to deal with the physical. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and you know what? And you were meant to be doing something much different. Yes. You know, because, again, I, like Nancy and I said earlier, and I know that David's sitting here in agreement with this, you know, if it had gone a traditional path, if, um, if he had been gone that yeah. day, if you had been in Florida at your sales meeting, yeah. you know, it, it's very, very likely, I would say it's almost definite, that none of these incredible books would have, would been, have written, been written, yeah. and you wouldn't be making the strides you're making, and yes. we wouldn't be sitting yeah. in this room together, right, yeah. being able to do this episode of Life Changing mm -hmm. Our Lives, because David and, and I, you know, always make sure we let listeners know, and I've said this from the time I created Guided Embrace Radio, if we just reach one person yes. through this show and change their perception or put a smile on their face or arm them with the information that they need to get through this day, right. then our job here is done. That's yes. It. Yeah, yes. I know we need to take a break, but I, I yes. want to close with this and, you know, and I hope that, that people are listening, other people listen to this on iHeartRadio later on. You know, it's a story of, uh, you know, you have, a, you have a choice. You know, like I always say, I had a choice, I could get it given up and just died. Mm -hmm. I had plenty of times that I could have made that choice. Or you can make a choice to rise, and you know, in Carolyn, you made you had to make a choice as well. You know, you didn't know what that choice was going to turn into be when you made the choice to say, "Well, I don't want my father to die," because that's a complete, that's mm -hmm. a, an infinite, that's done, right? You can't change that back. No, right. We can anyway. <laughs> So you made the better choice to say, let's keep him alive to see if there's something else we could do. Yes. Okay. So that's a choice that you had to make, not knowing what your family was going to do. Now, your family doesn't understand what you had to make. Right. They don't mm -hmm. know the choices you had to make. But at the end of the day, you, then you had another choice. You could have let this die. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or yes. you could have allowed this to rise. Yes. Now, I always say that if I die tomorrow, I have over 20 articles and, and I don't know how many videos on YouTube and how many times I've gone on television to share my testimony, that people can go back and listen to the story, listen to the message, and be inspired by it. That's what I pray. Right. So my job could have been done already. Right. You know, I don't believe it is. I believe I have more years to go to right. tell the story. But no matter what, I have done everything that I'm supposed to do to this today, even being here today. Right. So you made that choice as well. Yes. And said, okay, my dad's life is going to inspire millions. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Through his story. Yes. Correct. So you have that choice to make. Yes. And that choice, ladies and gentlemen, is the choice that I would tell anybody is the hardest road to take. Mm -hmm. Yes. So with that, I want to, you know, conclude this segment, Jackie. Yes, and um, we will be right back after a break on Guided Embrace Radio. Today we have another episode of Life Changing Our Live, and I am just threefold, really fourfold, because I have to always include Chad Blessed. Um, Woo! Woo! I have, Come on, Chad. <laughs> Producer. I'm your host, Jackie Messio, and I have my special guest host, David Octavio Gondel, by my side. Um, we have our special guest host from Women of a Certain Age, Dr. Reverend Nancy Kennedy, with us. And a very, very special guest, Carolyn A. Brent, here with us. 
And um, wow, we're getting very real today on Guided Embrace, mm -hmm. aren't we? Yes, yes, yes. And mm -hmm. um, in a beautiful way. Um, mm -hmm. Caroline is a nationally published author, a bodybuilder, 60 years young, and an elder care advocate. Um, she has made such great strides in the area of elder care advocacy and and just um, being there for the caregiver as well. The books that she writes are real and they're um, authentic with her voice um, throughout the pages. I have one downloaded or uploaded, I'm not sure which way you're supposed to say it, on my iPad and um, just amazing, Caroline, because what you've been through, um, you know, and, and we said this when you were on our show last hour, anyone could have or probably would have understood if you just threw in the towel and, and just became, you know, one of those people that unfortunately gets victim mentality and is depressed and is filled with bitterness and resentment and, and I am thrilled and the world is a much better place because that didn't happen to you, but that had to take a lot of strength and, and your commitment to honoring your dad but also your relationship with a higher power mm -hmm. to bring you through that and, and to help you realize, wait, I can be of service in my pain and in my struggle and in my frustration and I'm sure sheer disappointment in what was happening with your family members and they took over and, and then you found out later that your father had actually passed, correct? Yeah, it was about three weeks or two to three weeks after he passed I got a phone call from a distant niece and said, Carolyn, sit down, uh, Grandpa passed. Now, instead of me crying, I said, thank you, Jesus, mm, yes. because now he, he can't be robbed of his happiness. Because, because Dad and I were really close, he knew that I wasn't there. He knew I, I wasn't there. So the family member that was going after really money saw that I was using my income mm -hmm. in pharmaceuticals. I think that year I earned about 175. I was earning my, using my income to uh, take care of our father, Absolutely. but she, nobody believed it. Mm -hmm. I went to court with all my, you know, everything. legal documents oh, and everything yes. w with my. Is it the W twos or whatever? You know, right, tax, right. my tax returns. Exactly. Because you know you're not going to fudge your tax returns. No. Well, right. At least I'm not. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Most so, people will not. <laughs> yeah, so the the key thing I wanted to show them that I I was taking care of, but nobody wanted to believe it. And I did uh, put together a really thick binder. It's about this thick, of all of my father's medical, financial, you name Everything. it. It was in there. And that was probably my first book that I didn't realize I was writing a book. It's just that in pharmaceuticals, they teach you everything has to be documented in evidence. Mm -hmm. They call it evidence uh, case medicine. So what I was doing with dad, I would schlup dad from one doctor to the next, so I had all of his medical records course, with me. Right, so the doctors right. would know, and, and to this day people say, you are the most organized uh, patient I've ever seen. I said, well, I'm not your normal average or, exactly. you know. Exactly, right, I, right. So right. I'm you very, have very a handle on that yes. end of it. Yeah, because of just my years in the industry. And, and so, I mean, you know, I think caregiving, you know, we could do multiple shows on, on caregiving easily and, and even caring for the caregiver because as a caregiver, you have so much coming at you at once and even in best case scenario where everyone gets along, if you don't have a plan, if you don't know what you're doing, if you can't be proactive, that's just setting you up for some emotional uh, upheaval, correct? Time. Yes. Well, I you mean, know, that is why I was led to write the book because, and, and you notice all the titles are basically very similar, mm -hmm. preparing emotionally, financially, legally, you know, and taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what people, the emotional part, it's like no one wants to talk about and it. that's the hardest. That's what people need to do mm -hmm. is yes. have the, yes. I call it a crucial conversation. Because once you have that conversation and everybody's involved in the family, then you could create family legacy versus folks fighting at the, at, you know, at the hospital or, yes. you know, everyone Understood. has. Understood. Yes. Because, yes. uh -huh. you know, uh, you know uh, her name is Elizabeth. Kubler Ross. Ross. She yes. talks about the five uh, stages. stages of uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if more people understood that, mm -hmm. they would. Okay. It would be okay. Yeah. 
Again, we're listening to Carolyn A. Branch, a nationally published author, and of course her book that's in the Library of Congress is The Caregiver's Companion. And that's what we're talking about today is her story of how she um, had to take care of her father almost to his dying days. And, um, and through circumstances, wasn't able to even see, go to the funeral. But through that, Carolyn has risen up from that and has written seven books, and now she's a published author again. And she's actually, her book is actually in colleges now, Library of Congress. She's on television, had a show on ABC, I believe, yeah, for, ABC. for about a year and uh, 14 months. And now she's going to be launching a show in 2017, MSNBC as well. That's who is, is on the radio right now with us live, is Carolyn A. Brent. And Carolyn, one thing that keeps coming up in my, in my mind is, the fact that, you know, yes, we talk about this experience, and, and you know my testimony uh, to a degree as well, and of course Jackie and, and, and Reverend Nancy, but, you know, to someone that, not even that part, I, I think what I wanted to hear or wanted, I want to ask you is more about how you come up to make a choice to where you decide that this is your purpose. I know my, my, my side of the story, but I wanted to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Because I, every time I ask that question to somebody, when they're doing something that important, that I believe is something God-given, I believe is a purpose. Like yeah. we say, we all want to find our purpose. Mm -hmm. how, how did you, or when did you get to that acknowledgement that this is your purpose, and no matter what, no matter what negativity is coming yeah. my way, no matter who's telling me I can't do this, uh -huh. no matter who's telling me I'm crazy, yes. because I was told I was crazy that I said I was going to live. <laughs> Even to my dying day, uh, to my dying yeah. moment, I was in the hospital uh. literally on morphine, and people were saying, David, it's done. It's done. You're a morphine. You're not going right, anywhere. Right. No one wants to take your case. <laughs> Yet, I said, God's going to heal me. I don't know how, but yeah. a phone call came in at the last second, and that became the instrument, and that's Dr. Benedetto. And so, again, that's, that's kind of the question I want to uh, ask you today, is yeah. when did you acknowledge? Yes. This is, and I'm not letting anyone tell me differently. Mm. Well, you know, wow. David, that is an amazing question. And the reason why I say that, because a lot of people say, I, I'm trying to find my purpose. Yeah. What is my purpose? My purpose kept dragging me back to the computer to work on caregiver story. And I felt that I had so much peace when I was just sharing with other people what my story was and creating a website that was going to, provide information. Mm -hmm. So when I, all the time, I would work on this website, and that, back in those days, it was really hard for me because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so I would look forward to Sundays so I could work on the website because I was still working in pharmaceuticals, but I could not wait to get online mm -hmm. and just tinker around with Caregiver Story. It just kept pulling me and drawing me. So and that's, that's when it. I realized that was it. That was it. That was it just it. it kept pulling me. I so, felt peaceful when uh, any time I worked on it, and I still feel peace. Well, I still feel still peaceful feel to this it day. Feels good. Well, I don't you ever know feel what? like I'm working. And it's mm -hmm. interesting to me because you know when you talk with people um, who have made major shifts in their life, you know perhaps they're in the six plus figure income career and miserable, mm -hmm. and realizing they want to do X, Y, or Z, and then you talk with them after they take that leap of faith and they go for it and they do X, Y, or Z. And when they're immersed in their passion, in what they love, there's, there's an no pain. and there's an authenticity yes. that emerges. You're authentic, you're real. You know, when any of us are doing, yes. right, yes. what we love, mm -hmm. um, there's a shift, right? We feel yes, like, yeah. you know, you tell your testimony, let's be honest, you know, there are people that look at you, you know, or look at me even, and like, why are you talking about this again? But mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm that this is what you're supposed to do and you feel it in your core, right? But yeah. that's so what, I think that's, that's what you're that's saying what as is. well. When you, we're here to work with our passion, not to get money, mm -mm. not to survive. Money is a vehicle. That's yeah. all it is, just energy. But if you're working with that thing <coughs> that you will do 24 seven without eating, yeah. without sleeping, without money, I just know this is what I'm here to do, that's where everything falls into place. But when we're looking for the dollar, we're looking to do it because we need this or because we need that, it's not coming from our soul, it's right. coming from our ego. Yes. And that's why it fails us. So when you leave a job, 
you don't have that money anymore. Right. But if you're carrying your passion and working your passion, wherever you go, there it is. Yes. And that's beautifully that's, spoken. That's what we're supposed Absolutely. to work, work with. I mean, and, and it's it's fear or it's love. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about that before. All of those other emotions, you can still categorize them under fear or love. Oh, oh, yeah. Right? And I know that, you know, if I'm up at 2 o'clock in the morning because I'm worried or I'm replaying a situation that didn't go right or I'm second guessing, boy, am I exhausted when I wake up at 6, right? Yes. But if I happen to be up at 2 in the morning, and I'm not saying every day, obviously it would catch up, because I'm working on material for this show, or I'm reading something that an incredible author wrote, or I'm in touch with a higher power and I'm getting ideas of what to do next, guess what, when I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, sure, could I have used more rest? Absolutely, but it's a very different feeling. It is. You're it not is. drained. No, yeah, exactly, right? exactly. You're feeding your soul. Yes. You know, I would say this, I, I, I'm looking forward, there's a movie that I'm looking forward to, and not just Star Wars, but there's a... <laughs> yes, very soon, very there's, soon. There's a movie coming the same weekend, I believe, um, Collateral Beauty. Mm. And uh, for those that have seen the previews already, um, I'm predicting Will Smith to win an Oscar for that um, already. Um, there is something that touched me when I was writing my script for, my, for the movie that I'm writing that hopefully I'll, I'll be able to start next year. No, that you will be I able will, to start. I will, you will be able to start. Um, <laughs> you know, I, have, I have a lot going on. I have a book that I have to write. I have a documentary that I have to finish. And I have a movie that I, I want to finish the script. And, uh, and it's something about that movie that I just saw the preview and I connected immediately to it. And you know, for those of you that don't know, he's, uh, he lost a young baby. He lost his child. And through the ch losing of his child, he writes letters to three people. Well, not people, but he writes letters to time, love, mm -hmm. and, and uh, death. Mm -hmm. And those are three things. But I, what I, I guess what I want to tie to this is those are three things that we go through every single day. You know, some of us, like myself, when I was 29 years old, I didn't fear death. Wow. I was invincible. Yeah. I was. Oh, uh, there was there was Tell nothing. That, there was nothing that God didn't allow me to do. I was doing everything. I was uh, managing gyms and modeling and uh, and hosting and, and and training athletes and doing all these great things. And uh, you know, I had been blessed with an education and two amazing parents and faith. And I was invincible. I didn't think about dying. Mm -hmm. And then I was told I had cancer, and my life changed. Yes. And then you look at time. The one thing that you know, we can't buy. Yes. You know, everybody always asks me about, you know, they, there's two people that people bring up when I, when, I don't know why. It's Lance Armstrong is one of them, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Apple himself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and he had millions and millions of dollars, and he couldn't buy his life. That's right. And, but he changed the world mm -hmm. forever. Right. Yes. yes. And, and Lance Armstrong's, he lied, he cheated, he did a lot of things, mm -hmm. yeah. but he changed the world. Yes. Yes. And, you know, in Scripture, it talks about God can use evil mm -hmm. yeah. for his good. Amen. And so I look at that, and I look at, at death, at time, and love, and I said that I'm alive because of the love. I'm alive because people prayed for me, people that I will never be able to thank, um, prayed for me in churches that I will never even probably go, uh, prayed for my life. And I felt like God maybe said, you know what? Maybe I need to leave him down there. No. <laughs> you had to be maybe, here. Maybe, maybe, right. maybe, don't want to say, don't get it twisted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, he's making, maybe he is making a difference after all, you know? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I look at that and I think about it because it's a daily thing. And people ask me all the time, is, what do I do? Like Jackie said, what do you do? What do you do? I said, I do it because it's my purpose. Yeah. I do it because it's my promise. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's 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 why I am alive. When you find a reason to live, yes. not money or anything mm -mm. should ever stop you from mm -hmm. doing what you can. Mm -hmm. You know, I am very blessed to have this platform, a guided embrace with Jackie Vessio to to share you know stories and, and share you know other people's stories like Caroline to be able to give people hope. Yes. And that's how you start. You have to find hope in whatever you do, and then you then you get to faith. Um, you can't have faith if you don't find hope. A lot of a lot of us have mm -hmm. lost hope. And can I say one thing? It doesn't matter who is in who is in in charge of the country, who's in charge of your state, who's in charge of anybody. You're in charge of your life. Yes. 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 So if you can't understand and thoughts, that and your, your thoughts, thoughts, if you can't understand that, 
you know, I love Joyce Myers, I, I, Battlefield of the Mind, and, and your mm -hmm. mind is always going to break you, mm -hmm. you know, I try to break you. Mm -hmm. But J enough. Jackie, Nancy, Carolyn, and myself can tell you today, we are we have been stretched so far, yes. but we have never been broken okay, because we right. know God is in charge, mm -hmm. and we know these are all tests. Yeah. Right. But as long as you know that you, how about you guys just pass the test? So yeah. you don't have to take over it again. Right. Yeah. Don't right. go through the right. same right. thing right. over and right. over. Right. Sure. Just pass sure. the test. Yeah. You know, and I love what Nancy yeah. said about, you know, work and things like that. Uh, you know, I walked away from a lot. I walked away right. from my yeah. finances. I walked away from my, my employment, my career. I walked away from that. And even my parents this day are, are blessing me, you know, mm -hmm. at times because of them. You know, even though it's hard for them because they've seen me do so many things in life to mm -hmm. earn whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult. But... I hope that what people take from this show is the fact that all four of us here, you know, we are living our purpose and we're not letting anybody stand in our way and uh, we can Anything help you in possible. any way. We're oh, here for we're you. Here. Yes. Real quick, yes. because I can't believe it, but I'm looking at the clock and the time is up again. Um, if people want to reach out to you, obviously they can Google, right, Carolyn A. Brent, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N, A period B-R-E-N-T. Um, can they find you caregiverstory.com? Yeah, they can find me. Okay. I'm every place. You're every place. <laughs> no, yeah. and right. You can always contact us here at the show, Dad, if you're listening and even if you're not. Um, I love you very much. Wishing everyone all things bright and beautiful till we meet again. Whoa. Ooh, yay.